Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to talk about my pedal board. I know a lot of you are interested in knowing the effects I use and how I get the sound uh, that I get with my guitar. So I thought I'd do two different videos, one for my live setup, so to speak, and another one for my recording setup and how I mix and that kind of stuff. The funny thing is that I haven't really been playing that many acoustic gigs in the last couple of years. So I've never really had a live setup until fairly recently. With the pandemic, I started doing these monthly live streams. So I really needed to have, you know, all my effects laid out so I could easily use them uh, with any song. Uh, so there's really something fairly recent. So it's still kind of ongoing. I'm still changing things up. Um, but I think I found a, a relatively stable setup. So I wanted to share that with you. So I'm going to go through each effect, uh, explain how I have it set up and show you how it sounds. So let's get started. All right, so here's a pedal board. And right now I have all the effects off and I'll turn them on one by one so you can hear how they each sound and how they add to the guitar sound, most importantly. The only thing that's on right now is this one, which is a Headway EDB1 preamp. Basically what this does is it takes the two pickups. I talk more about the pickups on on the video on my guitar, if you want to check that out, I'll put the link in the description. But it takes those two pickups and I can blend them how I want and EQ them. So that's, this preamp is, I'd say 80% of the whole sound. I mean, it's really the basis of the whole thing. Let me put each pick, pick up separately so you can hear them. This is the, the DiMarzio Black Angel, which is the magnetic pickup. And this is the K and K Pure Mini. And this is the two of them together. Now, now, right now I don't have them uh, EQ'd optimally because for my live streams, I'm also using a microphone. So I'm not, this is EQ to work with the microphone. And I'm actually using a lot more of the Black Angel and less of the K and K. If I were going straight to a board and you were only listening to the pickups like we're hearing right now, um, I'd balance them differently and EQ them differently. Uh, but this is how I have it set up right now. EQ wise, I'm cutting, yeah, the high mids to get sort of that nasal sound that you sometimes get with acoustic pickups and also a little bit of the low mids, although that's not that necessary with the Black Angel. If I were using more of the K and K sound, I'd probably cut the low mids a lot more. And I'm bringing up the lows and the highs just to have a little excitement to the sound. All right, so that's basically how I take the two pickup signals and get them together. Now, before I go into this preamp, the Black Angel goes through this distortion here. That's uh, more Kali MK3. It's a preamp designed to emulate a Mesa Boogie. And I use it for two songs, for H and for No Quarter. And the reason I'm only using one pickup on it is because on acoustic guitar you generally don't if you're going to use distortion you don't want to distort the whole sound because then you, you you lose all the attack all the brightness and it generally doesn't sound very good so i'm just using it on this one pickup just to add to the sound and in addition to the k and k pickup i'm also using the microphone so it's only like a third part of the sound it doesn't become too overbearing so this is how that sounds Now, keep in mind, this isn't the ideal pedal for this. I'd probably use something else, but with what I have available, that was the best option. So I'm using it for those songs. It does the job, but honestly, I, I'm still looking for 
the perfect distortion pedal for at least for that kind of really distorted sound. All right, so then uh, after the preamp, we have both pickups sounding together and we go to the compressor. Uh, this is a Hyper Gravity by TC Electronic. And the reason I like this pedal and the reason I got it for acoustic guitar was for two reasons. It has uh, what they call spectra compression, which is basically multiband compression. So instead of compressing the whole signal, it separates it into separate frequency ranges. And that makes it compress in a more transparent way. The other thing is that it has a blend control, which allows me to let more of the natural sound through. So what I'm doing basically is I'm actually compressing it pretty aggressively, but then I only let a little bit of the compressed signal through. If you look here at the blend, I have it almost at eight o'clock. So it's, it's really subtle actually, but it just adds a little bit of excitement and it brings down the really loud parts. Since I, I tend to play very uh, loud on some songs and, and sometimes in the same song, I go from very quiet to very loud. That helps keep the dynamics a little bit in check, but it's very subtle. Um, this is with it off. And this is, this is with it on. It's subtle, it's not meant to be super obvious. It's just to keep those really loud parts a little bit in control, add a tiny bit of excitement. And it's really meant to work in conjunction with uh, some other pedals, which I'll get to in a minute. All right, so then we go to the Trellicopter. And this is a normal tremolo pedal, nothing special. But I have it here only for one song and it's for no quarter to get uh, that Leslie cabinet type of sound. I don't have a, a rotary pedal or anything like that. So that's the closest I could get with, with what I have here. So that's the, that's the only reason it's there. It's not something I really use too much. Okay, so then we go to the Fender Smolder Acoustic OD. Can I, this one over here. This is a really cool pedal. Uh, Fender came out with it fairly recently and it's an overdrive pedal made for acoustic guitar. So it has some very specific features for playing with acoustic. One of is just like the compressor, it also has a, a blend control. So that lets you blend in the overdrive sound with the natural sound. And it, it also has uh, this over here, which is a pickup compensation. And it's like a, it's kind of a pre-drive EQ, which is, it filters out the sound and it helps cut out certain frequencies and acoustic guitar pickups, which don't work very well with overdrive. Now I use this pedal, well, I, I'm, I'm still messing around with it, but what I like about it is that it's good for adding a little, it's almost like an EQ pedal. It, it adds some, some mid-range sound to it, adds a little edge to the sound. I'm trying to find the right balance between it adding edge without actually sounding like distortion. This is, let me bring down the blend. This is how it sounds without. And with. And, you know, you can blend less or more here. Let's bring it up more to exaggerate. Uh, it also has EQ if you want to change the sound of the drive, but uh, right now I have it not, you know, I try to keep it fairly subtle, not really in your face, just to add a little more edge. And then I'm using it like I, I was talking about earlier. I'm using that together with the compression and even with this other distortion to control the amount of to how much drive I want to add to the sound, you know. Uh, so depend, depending on the song, depending what color I'm going for, I use these different pedals in combination. And then that brings us to the deco, which is next. Let me turn this one off. 
I don't really have this one on all the time. I just use it for certain, uh, certain moments. But the deco I do have on all the time. This is basically a modulation pedal. Uh, it emulates the old tape machines. The, the way in the studio, the way you'd get a lot of modulation sounds was, was by using two tape machines uh, and putting them out of phase with each other or putting one kind of a little bit slower than the other. And you'd get like chorus effects, phasing effects, flanger, and even slapback delay. So basically here, by controlling this knob, this controls kind of the, the, the delay between the two tape decks and you get different kinds of modulation effects with that. So I have it around here, which gives me kind of a, a flanger type sound. And I can blend it with a guitar with a natural sound. Uh, this is how I have it. Now it's a, it's a little exaggerated right now. Since I'm blending it with the, the sound from the microphone, uh, here it's a lot more hyped on purpose. I know it because I know it's going to get lost if I try to be too subtle. But I, I basically have this on all the time. I really, I'm a big fan of having some kind of modulation effect. It helps the guitar sound bigger and it adds some nice movement. And, and I don't know, I just like how it sounds. So I always have this on. And then the other part of this pedal emulates tape saturation, which again, I'm using in a subtle way. I'm not like overdriving it like crazy, but it adds another level of, of drive and another level of compression to the sound. Is it with it off? And on. So that's where you see I have these basically four pedals, which all add different levels of distortion, of drive, and of compression. So I use those all together to, to color the sounds in different ways. For the live stream so far, the deco and the compress compressor, I leave them on all the time. But that may change. I, I don't know. That's, that's just my preference at the moment. So I'll leave those on for now. Okay, then from the deco, we go to the delay. This is the Boss DD20. They don't make this anymore. They, ha they have a new revamped version, uh, which is a lot more powerful. I've had this for a long time. Um, it has a lot of features, but basically I have a short delay on it. Uh, let me switch over to this preset. And it's very low in the mix. It's not really that obvious unless I do like some really sudden stops, you know. Like. But it's meant to be really low, kind of to blend in with the reverb, which is coming next. I also have it set up for for an analog emulation. So that rolls off the highs and, and helps it blend in with the, the normal sound. The other thing I use this delay for is as a loop pedal. It has a very basic looping function. In fact, the minute you stop the loop, it erases itself and disappears. So it's really kind of a, a momentary thing. Uh, but I use it very sparingly. I use it on Minimize, which is one of my own songs, and I also use it on No Quarter. Um, so, it, you know, for those two, it, it does the job. I have another looper, but, you know, for basic looping, this, this works just fine. And then finally, we get to the Blue Sky by Strymon. This is also a very cool pedal. One of the things with acoustic guitar is you really need a nice reverb to help fill out the sound. The, sound. the pickups by themselves sound very dry. And one of the reasons they sound kind of fake compared to a real acoustic guitar is because you're just hearing this very dry signal with no, no room sound, no acoustics. So a reverb really makes the guitar sound a little more natural. I think it's a really, the, if there are two pedals I'd need from this whole pedal board, it would be the preamp and the reverb. So this is how I have it set up. Again, this is, since I'm, I use the microphone on the live streams, I probably have it a little higher than I'd 
I normally have it. I have the mix here at uh, 10 o'clock and the DK is fairly long. And then this reverb also has a shimmer effect, which I use on some songs. Uh, I have it set here. It's very beautiful. I try not to overdo it. Um, I use it on you are my natural selection. And sometimes when I'm playing, I like to turn it on in certain parts just for effect. It's a really cool effect. Um, I like it a lot, but it's not, not something you, you'd want to use all the time because it can get old pretty fast. All right, so that's my pedal board. In a future video, I'm going to talk about the recording process and how I mix. And you'll see that there's actually a lot of similarities. A lot of what I do with my effects is trying to recreate what I'm doing when I'm mixing. So that'll be the next video I do. In the meantime, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want to be notified about my live streams, be sure to hit the notification bell. And that's it. See you next time.